So what is good everybody? It is your boy Chad bringing y'all another video and in this video um, we have exclusive stuff for Reuters here um, showing that you know before um, the Afghanistan collapse um, Biden excuse me Biden actually called um, Ghani and I guess that's the president of Afghanistan so he called Ghani and he was telling Ghani, like, yo, you need to change the perception of what's happening on the ground in Afghanistan. Um, you know, we're going to try to give you guys the best help we can, but we need the perception to change. So basically, he wanted the perception to change that nothing's going wrong. We got it all under control, you know, yada, yada, that sort of thing, which is a complete lie versus what we actually saw. You feel me? So he wanted him to change the perception so that way. You know, our allies to America and also the American people and Afghan people would think something totally different than what's really going on, which at this point, I'm like, there's no point in creating perceptions or lying to people. Just tell people what it is. If it's bad, it's bad regardless. You feel me? Like, I'm the type where if you got bad news, don't sugarcoat it. Don't try to change the perception because that's just manipulation, you feel me? And that's just lying. Just tell me what it is and let me deal with it myself, you feel me? Chad, this is going to happen. Dang, is that true? Okay, well, let me figure out a way so I can deal with it and be prepared rather than, oh, no, everything's going great, everything's going good, and then A, B, C, D, E, F, G happens, you feel me? So let's just go ahead and get into the story. So exclusive, before Afghan collapse, Biden pressed Ghani to change perception. Um, and like I said, this is by Reuters. In the last call between U.S. President Joe Biden and his Afghanistan counterpart, before the Taliban seized control of the country, the leaders discussed military aid, political strategy, and messaging tactics. But neither Biden nor Ghani appeared aware of or prepared for the immediate danger of the entire country falling to insurgents, a transcript review by Reuters shows. The men spoke for roughly 14 minutes on July 23rd. On August 15th, Ghani fled the presidential palace and the Taliban entered Kabul. Since then, tens of thousands of desperate Afghans have fled and 13 U.S. troops have scored. And 13 U.S. troops and scores of Afghan civilians were killed in suicide bombing at the Kabul airport during the frenetic U.S. military evacuation. Now, we did see, you know, recently after the botched withdrawal and all sorts of failures from military leaders and Biden, we did see, you know, that there was a suicide bombing. 13, you know, U.S. Marines were killed. And those Marines' families are even more mad because they're like, we just want to hear Biden say, you know, I'm sorry for your, you know, loss, that sort of thing. And instead, Biden's like, all he's doing is checking his watch over and over in video. And he keeps talking about his son, Bo. But Bo never died in a war. Bo died from either like heart disease or brain cancer, something like that. So people are like, he already botched the withdrawal. He already left the Americans there. They've already been suicide bombed. And now he's talking about his own son and stuff instead of addressing the families or at least trying to act like he's sorry. Instead, he's checking his watch. Anyways, let's keep going. Reuters reviewed a transcript of the presidential phone call and has listened to the audio to authenticate the conversation. The materials were provided on condition of an anonymity by a source who was not authorized to distribute it. In the call, Biden offered aid if Ghani could publicly, publicly project he had a plan to control the spiraling situation in Afghanistan. By Biden, we will continue to provide cl close air support if we know what the plan is, Biden said. Days before the call, the U.S. carried out airstrikes to support Afghan security forces, a move the Taliban said was in violation of Doha peace agreement. The U.S. president also advised Ghani to get buy-in from powerful Afghans for a military strategy going forward and then put a warrior in charge of the effort, a reference to Defense Minister General Bismillah Khan Mahmoudi. Biden landed the Afghan Armed Forces, lauded the Ar Afghan Armed Forces, which were trained and funded by the U.S. government. You clearly have the best military, he told Ghani. 
You have 300,000 well-armed forces versus 70 to 80,000, and they're clearly capable of fighting well. Days later, the Afghan military started folding across provisional capitals in the country with little fight against the Taliban. In much of the call, Biden focused on what he called the Afghan government's perception problem. I need... I need not tell you the perception around the world and in parts of Afghanistan, I believe, is that things are not going well in terms of the fight against the Taliban, Biden said. And there is a need, whether it is true or not, there is a need to project a different photo, project a different picture. So off rip, you know, Biden saying like, you guys have the best military, you got the best troops, all that. You're capable of fighting well. And then not even days later, the Afghan military started folding all across Afghanistan, just allowing the Taliban to take things and take over. And there is actually proof that, you know, the Afghan army was trying to fight the Taliban back. Like there are some Afghans because like, you know, on Twitter, the Taliban can just post their videos and their tweets and stuff. And there's videos of the Afghan army actually fighting back the Taliban. And then they, they're literally like, overrun and then the Taliban just executes them and Biden's like oh yeah you have the provision you've been trained but the thing is the way the military our military was over there training them was with the help of American support you feel me so it wasn't like oh we're just gonna train you guys and once we train you guys that's it you're good to go um you should be able to you know get everything done without us no it was, we're going to train you guys to use the American help that's here so that way you guys can defend yourselves. But as we know, when Biden withdrew, it was like, okay, here comes the Taliban. Here comes the Taliban. Let's get ready to defend ourselves. All right, let's call in the air support. And Biden's already withdrawn all the U.S. air support. Then you have the people down there like, well, what was all this training for? You feel me? Why are we even doing this if we have no support in the first place? And that's what happened. And then Biden's also like on the phone with him because Biden said, we didn't know any of this was going to happen. Yada, yada, yada. Now, this call, they already removed support from the airport in July, July, like first, even though Biden says he has no clue. So now you have it where stuff is not going well in Afghanistan. And instead of trying to come up with a good strategy or being like, let's try to get this area defended as best as possible. If we have to withdraw a little bit later so that we can do things smoother or do things over time to ensure American safety as well as Afghan safe, Afghan, Afghanian safety, then we need to come up with a plan. But instead, it looks like Biden was focused on projecting a different picture. So he wanted optics to be better than the actual situation, even though we should have just handled the situation the way the situation should have be hand should have been handled, no matter how hard it was, and then focus on optics later. You feel me? So Biden told Ghani that if Afghanistan's prominent political figures were to give a press conference together backing a new military strategy, this would change perception and that would change an awful lot. I think. So he said, I think. Well, he. Thought wrong, you feel me? The American leader's words indicated he didn't anticipate the massive insurrection and collapse to come 23 days later. We are going to continue to fight hard diplomatically, politically, economically to make sure your government not only survives, but is sustained and grows. The White House Tuesday declined to comment on the call. After the call, the White House released a statement that focused on Biden's commitment to supporting Afghan security forces and the administration seeking funds for Afghanistan from Congress. Ghani told Biden he believed there could be a peace if he could rebalance the military solution, but he added, we need to move with speed. So already the Afghan, you know, I guess president or person in charge, Ghani, he is like, yo, Biden, there is way that, you know, we can get peace here with the Taliban, but we got to rebalance the military and we got to move fast because us taking our time and stuff like that isn't going to work. That's what I'm basically getting here. So it looks like the Afghan president or leader, he knows what's going on. And he's trying to tell Biden, like, let's not worry about all this perception. Let's try to get a balanced military solution and just do it with some speed. Like, let's have some urgency. You feel me? So we are facing a full scale invasion composed of Taliban 
full Pakistani planning and logistical support and at least 10 to 15,000 international terrorists, predominantly Pakistanis, thrown into this, Ghani said. Afghan government officials and U.S. Ex experts have consistently pointed to Pakistani support for the Taliban as key to the group's resurgence. The Pakistani embassy in Washington denies those allegations. Clearly, the myth of Taliban fighters crossing from Pakistan is unfortunately an excuse and an afterthought peddled pedal by Mr. Ashraf Ghani to justify his failure to lead and govern, an embassy spokesman told Reuters. Reuters tried to reach Ghani's staff for this story in calls and texts with no success. The last public statement from Ghani, who was believed to be in the United Arab Emirates, came on August 18th. He said he fled Afghanistan to prevent bloodshed. By the time of the call, the United States was well into its plan withdrawal from Afghanistan, which Biden had postponed from the May date set by his predecessor, Donald Trump. The U.S. military had closed its main Afghanistan air base at Bagram in early July. So we were supposed to plan to withdraw from Afghanistan in May. That's what President Trump said. Biden postponed that withdrawal. He said, we're not going to follow Trump's plan. Like everything else he had just done this year, whatever Trump said, it was implemented. First day of office, what did Biden do? Put forth like 40 executive orders, and he did what he wanted to do. And he's gotten the result of what he's wanted to do. Clearly, at some point, we have to acknowledge that this is just not good leadership. All the way around, it's just not good leadership. So they botched whatever President Trump had. Biden did his own thing. And then he withdrew from the military or Afghan air base in early July. So when Biden says, I don't know what happened, you know, the Afghan army didn't do this. They didn't do that. No, you knew what was going on in early July, but you wanted the perception and the optics to be different. So you could try to save face. So you could try to, you know, put out a different picture of what's really going on. So what Biden was banking on is, since I'm a confused old man who has been messing up this whole time, and I know this isn't going to go right, no matter if the Ghani president is telling me, yo, we need to have a balanced military solution. We need to move with speed. We need you guys to be there. Instead, what I'm going to do is not follow the withdrawal plan. Like Trump said, I'm going to do what I want to do once again then when it all goes left, hopefully they spin the perception to make me look better. Instead of just coming up with a balanced military solution like the man said, so that way it could be better. It doesn't have to look better. It could just be better. Anyways, I don't even want to like start to get upset. So as the two presidents spoke, Taliban insurgents controlled about half of Afghanistan's district centers indicating a rapidly deteriorating security solution. Afghanistan was promising a shift in its military strategy to focus on to start focusing on protecting population centers, major cities rather than fighting to protect rural territories. Biden referred referred approvingly of that strategy. He said that doing so would help not just on the ground but in the perception internationally that was required to show up world support for the Afghan government. I'm not a military guy, so I'm not telling you what a plan should precisely look like. You're going to get not only more help, but you're going to get a perception that is going to change, Biden said. So he's saying he's not a military guy. He doesn't know what the plan should look like. And you're going to get some help. And, you know, the perception should change. Imagine if you guys were leading an army and the head, the commander in chief, of this army said, you know what, y'all, I know we have something going on over here in Afghanistan, but, you know, I'm not a military guy and I'm not telling you what a plan should look like, but you're going to get help and the perception should change. What are you talking about, bro? What is the plan? Your commander in chief, what should this plan look like? I get we're going to get help because you've been helping us for 20 something years. But we need a plan. We need a balanced military solution. And we don't need to worry about this perception changing. We need something that works. That way there's not bloodshed. We're not losing Afghan civilians. We're not losing Americans. You feel me? 
So Ghani, for his part, assured Biden that your assurance of support goes a very long way to enable us to really mobilize us in earnest. In a little over two weeks after Biden's call with Ghani, the Taliban captured several provisional Afghan capitals and the United States said it was up to the Afghan security forces to defend the country. These are their military forces. These are their provisional capitals, their people to defend, Pentagon spokesman John Kirby said on August 9th. On August 11th, U.S. intelligence reports indicated Taliban fighters could isolate Afghan's capital in 30 days and possibly take it over within 90. Instead, the fall happened in less than a week. So the U.S. intelligence report said that the like Taliban fighters could take over the Afghan capital in 30 days and possibly get it in 90. These folks did it in a week. So instead of learning to try to push a perception or say, I don't know, you know, I'm not really a military guy. I'm just commander in chief, but I'm not military. They did everything that they said the Taliban shouldn't be able to do in. It's like the Taliban just said, you know what? Let's warp speed this instead of 90 days like they're predicting. Let's see if we can get this done in a week. And they got it done in a week. The Biden Ghani call also underscored president political infighting that plagued the Afghan government. When Biden asked him to include former Afghan president Hamad Karzi in a press conference, Ghani pushed back. Karzi would not be helpful, he said. He is contrary. Excuse me. He is contrary and time is of the essence. We cannot bring every single individual. We have tried for months with President Karzi. Last time we met for 10 minutes, he was cursing me and he was accusing me of being a U.S. lackey. Biden paused for responding. I'm not going. I'm going to reserve judgment on that. Karzi cannot be reached for comment. So second call and his follow up later that day did not include the U.S. president, Biden's national security advisor, um, Jake Sullivan, General Mark Milley and the U.S. Central Command commander um, for the transcript. In this call, too, an area of focus was the global perception of events on the ground in Afghanistan. Milley, chairman of the Joint Chief of Staffs, told Ghani the perception of the United States and Europe and the media sort of thing is a narrative of Taliban momentum and a narrative of Taliban victory, and we need to collectively demonstrate and try to turn that perception, that narrative around. See, my problem is right there. Let's stop trying to, like, it's 2021. Let's stop trying to spin narratives for the American people and tell them what's going on. Like, at some point, we have to be cognizant. We have to be accountable that people need to know what's going on so they can prepare for the worst. You feel me? Don't give us this botched, oh, we need to spin the perception that this is Taliban victory, like the Taliban doesn't have victory and the Taliban doesn't have momentum. The Taliban won. If the Taliban, if anything, the Taliban are like, oh boy, like we did it. We got the U.S. military. We took over Afghanistan. Biden didn't know what he was doing. The Afghanians were caught off guard. This is a victory. That's what it was from the beginning. That's what it still is, no matter how the perception is twisted. And people need to know a, the Taliban's making momentum. A, this is probably going to be a Taliban victory. What we can do now is try to hold them off as we get Americans, refugees, and get our military out of there, back up the Afghanis, Afghanis, and then if the president needs to be airlifted out of the embassy, let's go ahead and air him, air him, air support him out of the embassy. But once again, Biden did say the Taliban will never take over. This will never happen. And exactly what he said would not happen has literally happened. So I don't really know what you can say. I don't really know if Biden has anything like relevant to actually put forth this. But perception twisting is not going to help. We need to have a plan, a balanced military solution. Anyways, I do not believe that. So, you know, he said, try to turn that perception, that narrative around. I do not believe time is our friend here. We need to move quickly, McKenzie added. A spokesperson from McKenzie declined to comment. So this whole thing, bro, is just, it's like it just gets worse and worse. And when you see that people are like, Biden's playing like he's just some old, decrepit man who has no clue what's going on. He's not a military guy. He didn't know Afghanistan or the Taliban would take over. Like he's had the press conference and said, no, this is not going to happen. I don't think they'll take over the embassy. To me, it's like, bro, you did know what's happening because he told you himself 
yo, we need a balanced military solution. We need to move quickly. The Taliban's already taken over capitals and cities, and we need something to be done. And Biden's like, uh, nah, we, uh, we need to just change the perception. We need the world to think that the U.S. got it under control and that nothing's going wrong in Afghanistan. And it's like, bro, like, I get that this is not going to look good on you. It probably would not have looked good on Trump either. But you didn't even follow Trump's plan. You discarded his plan. You went with your Hail Mary. It just turns out that your Hail Mary wasn't good at all. We end up losing American soldiers, 13 in a suicide bombing because we withdraw. It's not even that people are mad at Biden for us withdrawing. They're mad at how we withdrew. And it goes beyond Biden, too. It goes to our military, our woke military. They're so busy worried about white rage and are we being inclusive in commercials of, oh, I have two same-sex parents and I'm in the military and I'm used to fighting for injustice because I protested rather than us having a strong military, stop with all this perception and optics and this woke BS, and let's actually get some soldiers on the ground Protect what we have to protect. Keep it a buck with the American people, the Afghanians, so everybody can prepare ahead of time before we're all getting our heads chopped off. Suicide bombers are blowing us up and we're caught looking with our pants down like, what is going on? What is our leadership doing? And our leadership has already said they're not worried about being real leaders. They're just going to focus on perception. Like it. Bruh, it literally is not that hard. If I was running an army and they said, the enemy who y'all have is coming to take over, they're gaining momentum, this will probably be a victory for them, I would say, all right, bet. This is what we're going to do. Military. We're going to try to hold down. We're going to try to defend the areas that we can defend right now. We're going to try to withdraw the people who stay there, or the civilians, the Americans, and our soldiers, little by little, till we can get them all out and get the president of the area we're trying to defend so that way when the Taliban does came, come and take over, which is going to look bad regardless, we're going to tell the people it's going to look bad, but you got to listen to what our military strategy is. We're going to try to do the best we can so that way when they do take over, we have as little bloodshed as possible. They can go ahead and take over, but at least we got all our people out and have done a good job. Instead, they just botched the whole thing, dog. Botched the whole thing. And this perception and Biden clutching onto his little thing and, and putting his head down, it's not going to work for me. It's just, it's not going to work. I don't think it's working for anybody. Just imagine all the lives that were lost in Afghanistan to just turn around and hear, well, this was a perception thing that needed to change and we tried the best we can. But then you find out later that the president had all this information. He played like he didn't. He really did. And now we've lost American lives. The families are devastated. The Afghanians are being executed. There are people that are stranded over there, confused on what's even going on. There's no military air support from the U.S. All the training was for what? Because we have no support. It's not that difficult, dog. Like, if we stop being so woke, maybe we can actually accomplish things. I bet you people who play Call of Duty video games could accomplish more than what they did, but it's whatever, man. I wore the shirt for a reason because it's just all clown behavior. It's, it's no other way you can put it, man. But it's been your boy, Chad. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or you even made it to the end of this, I know this is a long video, then thank you guys for watching. But as always, it's been your boy, Chad, and I'll catch you guys in another video. Peace.